All right, people, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about sampling in FL Studio. I'm going to go over the basics, some cool stuff you can do to make your sampling sound more unique and stand out, and of course, all the issues you're going to run into when you do try and sample. So, yeah. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first. How do you get your sample into FL Studio? Well, it's very simple. Download a sample from one of your favorite producers. I don't know who possibly could have a sample pack. Regardless of who it is, it should be labeled with the BPM. So all you'll need to do is before you drag it in, go up to your BPM. So this one says 65 and we'll just put this on 65 and that's going to line up with the BPM. If it's a random sample and you can't find the actual BPM, there's a few things you can do. So the first thing you can do is right click on the sample once you drag it in. And this honestly only works some of the times and you can select detect tempo. And then I usually do between 75 and 150, but you know, feel free to do it something else if you feel like it's in a different BPM. So let's just do that right here. And it's wrong. It's actually 140 BPM. Then in that case, if it sounds like it is not in in time and here's what it sounds like when it is in time then what you can do to, is go to a website called tombat.analyzer and just drag the song or the sample you're using in here and it's correct 70 is half of 140 and so this would still work and one thing that might throw off your samples bpm too is often when you download songs there's like just a little empty space right here and so just make sure you Loop that down. All right, so now that you've got your BPM matched, it's on to the actual sampling part, which is, I know what you're here for. Now, the first way you can sample or chop up your samples, I should say, is if you just press C, it'll bring up this blade, or you can go up here if you just wanna waste time. You can just go in here if you see, like, listen to part and you wanna chop it up, you can make the chop right here. So maybe I wanna just chop this up right here and have it repeat. You can do something like that. Or if you want to get a little crazier with it, you can also go in here and maybe make the chops a little bit, you know, smaller. Do something like this. Etc. Now, if you really want to go crazy, though, I would say this is not the best method. This is better for, you know, the larger chops or keeping the sample closer to the same. If you want to get a little crazier, which we're... We're about to. What you're gonna wanna do is open up Fruity Slicer. If it's not showing up here, just go to more plugins and type it in, which we're gonna do now because I already opened this up. So this will load a little faster. All right, never mind. Oh man, it's frozen. And my leg's itchy. Fruity Slicer, boom. Now we got it. Then from there, you'll just wanna go and drag it in. So it's samples right here. Sometimes it'll go to audio right there. So just click unsorted and that's how you kind of deal with that, which is annoying. And then there's a few things you're gonna need to do. So first click on this blade right here, go to beat, just going to slice it in time with the beat. And you're gonna pull up the attack. That's gonna get rid of like a popping sound and the decay a little bit. And then on your MIDI keyboard, And start playing little chops at first just chop up like this so you could even go with something like this if you wanted to now you can basically go in here and rearrange things if you want manually so we could do something like this And then another thing I really like about using this method versus just chopping it the other way is you can also make really tiny chops like this, which can sometimes sound cool. That does sound pretty cool. <laughs> another thing you do is play with the pitch shift, which is this right here, or the time stretch. And so the pitch shift is just going to change the key of the sample. Just make sure if you look up in this corner to go up a hundred cents, as that'll be like one note. And then maybe play with the time stretching. versus how it sounded originally. Another thing you can do in here, that's a lot harder to do in the pattern. You can go in here, just click on any part and reverse the sample. So you can do something like this. Up 
feel like I just want to make a beat right now, but all right, we'll, we'll continue. I'm going to cook up after this. All right, now let's get into some more cool stuff also related to problems that might arise when you're sampling. All right, so the first issue you might have is let's say you have a cool sample. It sounds like this. <laughs> And maybe you chopped it up, maybe you didn't. I want to show you a way that you can kind of turn just something as simple as this into a full song by doing some very easy manipulation and keeping your beat from getting overly redundant when you have like a specific part of the song that you really like, but you can't find any other sample chops or, you know, maybe you're just feeling lazy and you don't want to add any additional instruments, etc. So we've got this sample right here, like I just played. And the first thing you can do is if you take this sample right here, go to make unique, which I did already over here, and then just go and pitch it up all the way turn down the volume you can add additional effects if you want but even just doing this works pretty well so we've got our original sample here and i threw some drums on just for fun you can get something like this without So really simple, easy way to add some variation. Another thing you can do is if you take the sample, you can pitch it up if you want to, but you don't need to. And this could be maybe for like the verse section or a breakdown in the song. Just take that sample, put it on your mixer track. So that's just control L and you can use something like halftime. If you want growth speed also does this function. It's an FL plugin. Then you maybe add some kickstart or volume automation and you get something that sounds a little bit different with the same sample. So again, it just adds a nice little contrast and you can really take the same loop or same sample and make an entire song just doing that. And now another thing, and this is a kind of a solves a similar problem in terms of everything being a bit redundant. One of the best ways you can do that is let's say you have a sample chop like this right here. which is just the same sample that I was just showing you a second ago. And you want to kind of move it forward, but you're like, how do I make it sound cohesive? So the easiest thing you can do is just picking out a couple of chops within here. Usually keep this first one the same um, as it's just going to flow a little bit better. But for example, if we take this right here, watch it how it flows. Boom, flows very nicely into the next part of the song and it sounds like it belongs and keeps it from being once again redundant, which is something that can happen a lot of times when people sample. All right, now this is when things are a little bit more extreme and you just have like a little part of a song that you really like, but it's relatively short and this is a very easy fix. All you need to do is grab your sample, pick out the part you like, that's control alt C, just turn it in audio file. Once you convert it into an audio file, just copy the other one out here, right click and go to make unique. And then you can pitch it down 500 cents or up 500 cents. So again, just in the upper left hand corner, let's just go down and it's going to sound just like it's part of the same sample. Now the next one is a new feature from FL and it's amazing. But let's say you have a sample and it has drums, which are really hard to chop around. In FL, if you have the newest version, check out your sample. So right click it, go to extract stems from sample, and then you can just check what pieces you want. So I want everything, we're gonna extract that. This is also why FL is the superior doll. Now we have everything. So we have a sample without the drums and the bass line. So this will be nice to just sample if you want to add your own bass line later. And then you can even go ahead and use the drums if you want. Or the vocals. Which don't sound very good. So it's not perfect. And last but not least, because this is probably the issue that's going to pop up and make you not want to sample anymore. But don't worry, I'm about to know show you exactly how to deal with that so feel free to drop a like i'll wait and that issue is actually finding which notes to put your bass line or your 808s on now for example we have this sample right here this is just a sample i made part of my loop hits lost again
So let's just say I chopped this up and I sampled it or whatever. What I'm able to do is because I have the MIDI right here, which is the MIDI, I could just take all these root notes to the bottom notes right here. And I just add a bass line and it works. But because you're, you know, ripping a sample off of YouTube, etc., that's not an option. There's a few things you can do to kind of make it easier. So first, figure out the key of the sample, which you can just Google. Or again, you can use tunebat.analyzer because it'll tell you the key. So this is in C major, which is all of the white keys. And so what I would recommend doing there is just starting with C. That doesn't sound very good. I guess this one is technically an A minor. So that note sounds good. And then you kind of just have to go through all the other notes in the scale and just see where things fit. So it kind of takes a while, but you get better the more you do it. And then another thing that I found somewhat helpful is if you right click here, this is kind of hit or miss sometimes. So this will show notes and there's a lot more notes going on than just this, but sometimes this can be helpful. You can be like, okay, there's a lot of E. So maybe I'll try and put a note on E, et cetera. Now, one last thing that's kind of helpful is listen to when the sample changes. That's likely when a note is changing. So it can make it a bit easier to kind of figure out when you need to change notes for your bass line or for your 808s. And when your chop is repeating, just use the same bass note there or 808 note and it should sound pretty good. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you want to see what sampling is capable of doing, feel free to check out this video, but hopefully I will see you soon. Peace.